You hear the screeching of an owl You hear the wind begin to howl You know there's zombies on the prowl And it's terror time again They've got you running through the night It's terror time again And you just might die of fright It's a terrifying time Hello everyone, today we're going to the hood in Zomboid, and no, I don't mean downtown Louisville. No, today we are covering mechanics and discussing all we can about cars. Today we're going to learn about what you need to strip a car down to parts, how to do it, and what will benefit you in your quest for a car, including where to find them. Before we start, I'd like to once again ask you for your support on the content with a like, tell me what you enjoy about the video, or maybe give me some of your Zomboid experiences, and subscribe for more content. Now let's drive on. First up is the fact you're gonna need a variety of tools to strip a car down to its frame and leave it on blocks. The first thing you're gonna need is a wrench, required for many parts such as the brakes, the suspension, the doors, and more. You just aren't gonna get very far without one. A screwdriver is needed to steal many of the smaller parts out of the car, such as the battery, the headlights, the windows, and more. A lug wrench and jack are especially needed if you want to steal the tires, the brakes and the suspension. You're also going to need inventory space for the parts. I recommend you have a large bag if you want to take any of the larger, heftier parts like the tires, which weigh 15 each. You also may require a propane torch for depending on the repair. A lot of the bodywork can be repaired by applying metal sheets to reinforce the damaged areas, like the trunk or hood. There are three categories of cars, those being sport, standard, and heavy duty slash commercial. The first category, sport, it covers all the higher end luxury cars. You've got your Chevalier Cossette, the Niala, the Primani, the Dash Elite, and the Mercia Lang 4000. Sports cars tend to go fast, look flashy as hell, and are smaller cars. Your standard cars consist of the Chevalier Cerise Wagon, the Chevalier Dart, the Dash Rancher, and the Masterson Horizon. Standard cars tend to be the middle of the road average vehicles. Not the fastest, but they tend to be a little bit bigger and have a decent storage capacity. The final category is the heavy duty commercial models. These include the Chevalier D6, the Step Van, the Dash Bull Driver, the Franklin All Terrain, and the Franklin Value Line. All of these vehicles tend to be more powerful, larger vehicles that, while slower, they offset this with plenty of capacity and the ability to push through rough situations. Another difference in these three vehicles, however, is what's required to repair them. Commercial model vehicles, on average, require a higher skill level to successfully pull off repairs and salvaging of parts versus standard model cars. Take, for example, engine repairs. Standard model cars require a level of four to take spare parts from and apply to another car. A commercial model, however, requires you have a level of five to take parts off of and apply to another car of the same category. You're about to get real tired of my diatribe of puns coming up. It may even cause you to break. But let's not keep you in suspense any longer. To repair cars, you're going to require the right knowledge. You can either start with the mechanic's job, amateur mechanic's trait, or locate the three magazines that teach you how to fix sports, standard, and commercial model vehicles. Now let's keep trucking on in our pursuit of knowledge before you bed down for the night. Van, you believe that these don't stop? Once you have these items in hand, you'll also want to search for the mechanic's skill books, because grinding the levels required without the multiplier will cause wrenching pain. It's pretty jacked up if you ask me. If you plan to rely on a vehicle, then considering the amateur mechanic trait isn't a bad idea. If for no other reason than a hefty XP boost to make getting those required levels easier, 
not having to scavenge for the magazines. Another way to increase EXP gains off a car, however, is the fact you can also get XP for putting the car back together, not just taking it apart. So you can double dip on cars that gain those levels a little easier than searching for even more cars. And the fact you could come back the next day or two and repeat the process all over again if you didn't destroy the parts while taking them off and on, that is. I wasn't sure which segment to insert these two traits in, so I figured I'll put them with the others. But there's also two traits that affect cars. This being Speed Demon and Sunday Driver. These traits make a car drive faster or slower, respectively. These both come with pros and cons, however. Speed Demon, while it will let you drive insanely quickly depending on the car, it becomes becomes a lot harder to control and break in time. This is important because the roads are often littered with all sorts of obstacles, ranging from broken down cars, road work being done at the time of the apocalypse, literal scrap wreckages of burned down destroyed vehicles, hordes of the undead dispersed at random, and more. Being able to stop quickly or swerve controllably is something you'll definitely want when you're driving two tons of death. Sunday Driver, however, could be the opposite problem. Slow to gain speed, especially noticeable vehicles that have badly damaged engines or larger heavier vehicles. While this does let you have more control over the vehicle, it does limit how fast you can get places or push through hordes if you can't channel the horsepower you need. Personally, I tend to take Sunday Driver if I take one of them at all, as it gives me a point and it's usually better for someone like me to drive a bit slower anyways. Keep in mind that if you wreck, you can take severe damage damage from the cars. This also depends on how fast you crash. Hell, on one of my streams like a year ago, I hit a tree going so fast my car went flying through the air and somehow landed back on the tires. It was awesome, but it sure beat the hell out of my survivor. Now, cars can be found in a variety of locations. Though most commonly, you're going to find them in parking lots, driveways, and roads. These three locations are where you'll want to look for cars. And while yes, this does sound very vague, the entire world is just filled with these three types of locations. So go nuts! The biggest requirement to drive is going to be the key. You're either going to need to find a key for a car, or you're going to need to hotwire the car. Either starting with the burglar profession, which lets you hotwire things right off the bat, or you're going to require two mechanics and one electrical skill. After you can hotwire or got the key, you're going to need fuel. You're going to need gasoline if you want to get anywhere. There is a variety of sources for fuel within Zomboid, but no matter what, you're going to need it. You're also going to need a gas can. These can be located in several locations. A gas station is one of the most likely places to find one, and anywhere hardware or car loot can spawn like sheds and warehouses can also spawn these cans. Garages and even the trunks or beds of cars can also spawn these cans of go juice. If you manage to find a can but it's empty, do not fret. There's no reason to get all gassed up. Just see the siphon nearby cars of their fuel if you don't intend to use them, or sneak into your local fuel station and take what you need for yourself. You can also fuel the car up as long as the gas cap is near the pump and the pump itself has power. Once you've got the car fueled up and made sure all the other essentials aren't busted like the tires or engine, then you're ready to start driving around. Do keep in mind, however, that vehicles are loud and the more damaged your engine and muffler are, the more zombies you'll attract driving around the map. Cars, just like in real life, require maintenance, especially if you treat your car to a lot of rough conditions, like say, repeatedly mowing down zombies. Windows will shatter, bulbs will explode, hoods will bend and crumple, trunks will dent and deform. Pretty much every part on your car will be worn down over time and require either repair or complete replacement. To do this, you're going to have to locate parts. Your most common source of these parts is going to be scrapping down every vehicle you can. To get metal sheets to repair your trunk or hood, dismantle car 
Rex found along the road. You'll often have to make do with whatever parts you can find on the cars that are already on the roads. However, there are some areas in the game that can spawn new parts specifically. Auto repair shops like those located in Moldrov, Rosewood, and Riverside can be an excellent source of raw parts if you get lucky to find the ones you need. The rail yard's another place that spawns the plethora of both car and hardware parts, which you'll need if you want to get, say, metal sheets or propane torches and welding masks. Tool sheds and farm sheds can also, if lucky, produce these parts. Once you've ripped apart every car you can find, both for parts and XP, then we move on to fixing our vehicle of choice. Every repair action requires the right tool and the right skill level to succeed. Keep in mind that even if you do succeed, there is a small chance the part will still be slightly damaged upon setting it or removing it. Tires require, in addition to be kept in high condition, also require an ideal air pressure so they don't explode while driving. While you can drive without some of your tires, this is terrible for the vehicle and best used in a last ditch, oh fuck, I I gotta get out of here before I die situation. While many tasks you can do without the right skill level, attempting to do so will often fail and cause a hefty amount of damage to the part. This isn't a big deal if the car is just being ripped apart for the XP, but if you actually need that part, you may be better off waiting till you got the right level before you attempt to remove it. Cars have a variety of features that further enhance their usefulness besides being storage. You can sleep inside them, you can use a heater in the winter and the air conditioning in the summer, you can use a horn or a siren to attract zombies attention or alert other players you're in the area, you've got headlights to illuminate the road in dark or blurry conditions such as inclement weather, you've got cruise control that you can set using control W to go faster or control S to go slower, you've got a radio which can be used to fight boredom and keep your sanity up, at least before the media blackout. You get stashed loot within all the seats, the glove box, the trunk, or the bed of the vehicle. You can also use a car in a rough situation to batter zombies down that are in your way. Though keep in mind that this does damage the parts and can lead to your tires over time exploding from damage. I think that this is a good point for a break. You should be fueled with the knowledge to drive on. I'd wheel bad if I kept you here forever. Besides, at this point, you're gonna be breaking down my door for the atrocious level of puns. Besides, I don't wanna door you. But in all seriousness, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I've hoped you've learned how to get a car for yourself in Zomboid and keep it running. Please be sure to support the content down below and I'll see you in the next video.